Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial on Anaconda and Jupyter. Here we're going to learn how to download and install the Anaconda Navigator and Jupyter Notebooks. So for starters, what is Anaconda? Well, Anaconda itself is a simple distribution software that provides everything a user would need to start Python development. Anaconda includes the Python language itself, we get to actually choose which version we want, includes the necessary libraries, I think there's over 100 libraries included with Anaconda. There are a few editors, such as Jupyter Notebooks, that's really the only one we'll use here. And then there'll also be a package manager as well. As for Jupyter Notebooks, what are they? Well, the Jupyter Notebook is an open source web application that allows users to share documents with text, live code, images, and more. We're going to be using Jupyter Notebooks to write code in Python, as it provides an interactive and a very easy to use interface, and it's very easy to share and open files. So, we'll learn now how to download and install Anaconda and Jupyter. In the previous video, we downloaded and installed it for a Mac. If you're watching this one, I'm assuming that you're using a PC. So we're going to show you how to download and install Anaconda for PC. Jupyter actually already comes installed with Anaconda, so there should be no other installation necessary. And then I'll just show you how to start a new Jupyter notebook up. So let's come out with this and we're going to go to the Anaconda downloads page. If you're not sure where to find this, then you can simply search for download Anaconda Okay, we'll go to this first one. Then we're going to go down to download Anaconda for free. Okay, and it should take you right to that uh, page here. So let's just close it up. So what we'll want is the Windows installer. So let's go ahead and select that. I would recommend going with the later version 3.6 as there are a bunch of tools that aren't included in 2.7. If you're really dead set on 2.7, you can use that. But I would, again, recommend 3.6. So let's just go ahead and download that. And I'm just going to actually pause the recording on my end and come back once this is done. All right, and we are back. So it finally finished downloading, took a few minutes. I just opened up the executable file that should appear down here. You can just click on that, or you should find this. I think it defaults to your downloads. I'm not sure what your computer settings are. So just go ahead and open up the executable files like anaconda.exe, and it should open up this installation wizard here. So let's just go ahead and click next. We'll definitely give this a read through and agree. You can choose for all users or just me. I'll do it in just this one. Uh, we'll choose a specific location for this guy. I'm just going to go with four. You can browse, select a different location if you want. Okay, we're not going to bother with either of these. We'll just leave them as their default values. And let's just go ahead and click install there. So this is going to take a few minutes off its own. I'm just going to pause my recording once more and wait for this to finish. All right, and looks like we're finally done with the installation. So let's just go ahead and finish this off. We're going to skip this. We don't really want to install Microsoft Visual Studio Code right now. And we'll just uncheck these boxes unless you do indeed want to learn more about these. So let's go ahead and finish that up. And now let's open up Anaconda, start a new Jupyter Notebook, and then I'll just really quickly explain what they're all about. So we're just going to search for Anaconda, if I can actually spell it properly. And we'll want this guy here, the Anaconda Navigator. So this will just take a minute or so to start up, but we'll bring up the Anaconda Navigator home screen. This will provide us a few different options we can choose from as far as text editors go. We're going to select a Jupyter Notebook, and the great thing is that Jupyter already comes installed with Anaconda. So there's no need for us to add any additional downloads or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and select it, and we're going to go for a Jupyter Notebook here. So let's launch that up, and it will launch a new directory kind of thing in the browser here. So you can see it says home and gives us a list of files in and directories in the directory that Anaconda is saved in. Okay, so what we're going to do for now is just navigate to the correct, cor correct directory that you want and we're just going to select a new Python 3 notebook. So what this will do is it will start a new Jupyter notebook. This is what a default one looks like. You can give it a title by clicking up here. And there's a few options to choose from as far as actions go. You can see that there's this cell here. And the way Jupyter Notebooks work is that basically we write and run code in individual cells. That being said, the code that we write in one cell persists into the next cell. So let's say, for example, um, I'm just going to create a quick markdown just to show you what this is. It's just to hold some text. So it's kind of like a text holder. 
Okay, we run the cell to complete it. Okay, because this is just text, there's nothing to run. But let's say I created a variable called variable one. I set its value equal to five. I run this, and unless there's a problem with the code, it should compile and run just fine. Now, if I go to print variable one, okay, that code should persist between the cells. So if I run this, it will execute the code found here, and it will start me a new cell. Okay, so that's how Jupyter Notebooks work. It's a really nice, clean way to organize things into individual cells. So we're going to end this section here, and I'll let you guys move on to the next tutorial, unless this is the final tutorial in that series, in which case, thanks so much for watching.